road trip through West Sussex this morning with some exciting destinations on the docket. The previous day, we had toured the fabulous Arundel Castle. Next up is a stop at our first destination, the village of Amberley. The free car park here in Amberley and right next to it are all these sheep. Amberley is a village with some very interesting and pretty homes and a 12th century church, which we are off to find now. We saw this somewhere else in West Sussex yesterday. Very odd to see a tiled roof with thatch on top. Lots of flint stone houses and thatched houses. I've seen the thatched animals that are fighting hares, but I haven't seen the fighting squirrels. That's awesome. Beautiful thatched cottages and stone cottages, but so different from the Cotswolds because the building materials are just very different here in this part of the country. Just beautiful ancient stone here on the outside. And a big yew tree, of course. We've shut the door to keep the swifts out. And now we have the church to ourselves to look at. Uh, one of the first things I noticed is the really old paintings on the wall. Have to find out when those are from. And so we have some Gothic arches here from when the church was expanded. This Norman arch here is really beautiful. The detail of all the zigzag pattern. Kind of the chevrons. It's in great shape. Beautiful tile work, I assume Victorian. And some lovely stained glass windows. This is the ancient part of the church back from the early 1100s. The font is from the 12th century, although obviously it has been heavily restored to, to keep it in this condition. And then it's really fascinating. These paintings here are from the 12th and 13th century incredible but they're so old and this well preserved showing Christ his crucifixion and resurrection these ducks and moorhens or whatever they are are just cracking me up because they're paddling around in this really <laughs> scummy looking yet absolutely picturesque pond I think it's just covered in algae or something I guess but it still is quite beautiful and Amberley has quite a lovely selection of magenta sweet peas as well. And pretty poodles. More of the wood. There's a lot of this wood stuff here. Okay, now we've got a hare and a fox chasing it. That is just the best thatch ever. And even their garage has a thatch roof. And hollyhocks. And these little roses that are just packed full of blossoms. Oh my goodness, so many. And unlike some quaint villages that are just overrun with tea rooms, Amberley does have just one tea room and it is kind of perfect. Look at this sign. Now we're going in search of the Amberley Castle. The land for Amberley Castle was gifted to Bishop Wilfred in 683 by the King of Wessex, and a timber-framed hunting lodge was built here in 1103 by Bishop Luffa. Over the next four centuries, the lodge morphed into a fortified manor house, complete with castle-like crenellations, battlements, and a massive portcullis. During the Civil War, the castle became a royalist stronghold. But in 1643, at the orders of Oliver Cromwell, the castle was destroyed, leaving only a ruin. When the monarchy was restored in 1660, 
King Charles II visited Amberley and gave the castle back to the bishopric. In 1872, the church sold the castle to a lord who made it into a hunting lodge once again. The house was owned by a few more families and the 2.5 ton ancient portcullis was reinstated. Then in 1989, the castle was converted into a luxury hotel, which has gained five-star international reputation in the decades since. Actually, the doves are treating this castle tower as a dovecote. They're just finding all these little condos to make for themselves in every little hole that's available. Our next stop in West Sussex is Lansing College. We are going to see the chapel there because it's famous for being a beautiful example of Gothic Revival architecture. The drive up to the college is very picturesque. This college is really beautiful and I'm excited to look inside the chapel. This is a really stunning school chapel. It's the largest school chapel in the world. And at the tallest part of the nave, it's 90 feet tall inside. Very few cathedrals have greater than 90 foot interior height. The day we came to visit, they were actually holding a graduation ceremony inside the chapel. So we could not wander around inside the nave, but this little bit of footage and photos gives you an idea of how magnificent the chapel is. I really love Gothic Revival architecture, and I'm so glad that so many buildings were built during that time period and have been preserved and restored so that we can still enjoy them today. So vertical, so many buttresses. Looking around the exterior and interior of the building, you can really see why this style is called Perpendicular Gothic. Construction of the chapel began in 1868, and this Victorian chapel stands as one of the finest examples of 19th century British architecture. I believe that somewhere over in this direction is Brighton, but we're just blasting by on the A27. Because for us, the next stop on this road trip is a village in East Sussex known as Alfriston. It's supposed to be a pretty village, and we are in search of a delicious tea at a place we've heard is really good. Oh, those are some pretty rolling hills. Even though this tea room has a funny name, Badger's Tea House, it has come highly recommended, so I can't wait to try it. There are all these lovely little cozy tables indoors. And then a lovely garden out back with loads more sunny and shady tables. The tea house is in a building that was originally a timber frame building built around 1510. And you can still today underneath the wash basin see the original soul plate, which was the massive oak beam that was part of the foundation. Lovely proper teacups with flowers and gold trim. This is our lemon and ginger tea. These cheeky little critters are just hanging out, waiting for someone to drop a crumb off their cake dish. And here is my warm cheese and pecan, or you can say pecan if you want, you're just wrong. And then over here we have the cream tea, which has some lovely big fluffy scones, or scones, or scones, and some fabulous looking clotted cream. Strawberry jam here, and then this is gooseberry jam here with butter, because allegedly that's supposed to be delicious on the cheese scone. Oh, look at these scones. I do love a tall, fluffy scone. Ian says they're really good. I felt this pressure on my ear, and it was a bird flying right next to my ear, like a centimeter away from my ear. Its wing flaps so that the <laughs> air pressure increased right around my ear. Eardrum is weird. I was going for a crumb across the... Yeah. Across the way. You were in the way. Oh, oh no. Did you see that? Ian dropped a crumb. <laughs> oh no, we're in trouble now. Oh, this one's found a crumb too. Well, all the scones were fantastic, and I have to say that that warm cheddar and pecan scone with the butter and gooseberry jam on top was 
pretty phenomenal. The cakes looked amazing, but unfortunately we didn't have any tummy room to have any. The Badger Tea House experience was perfect. The food was delicious and the service there was amazing. Also, it was kind of fun that the place really felt like it was full of locals rather than your typical Cotswold tea shop, which would be full of tourists. If you're in Alfriston, highly recommend the Badger Tea House. This place is called the Old Bank. And honestly, so much of what you see around Alferston does look like it's pretty old. I love the old Smugglers Inn. That's great. Market Inn on this sign. And I think Alferston has been a market town since the 1400s. Even though it is a village now. So many fun shops in the center of the village along the high street. This restaurant looks really charming. The Star. Lots of interesting engravings all over the front of the building. It's got with this tongue sticking out. And the George Inn is across the street. Ian is noticing how there's the big slate tiles and then more modern clay tiles above that. And lots of buildings again built with that beautiful flint stone. Visit Elfriston's historic tie. What's a tie? Here's the Six Bells free house. So many pubs and they're all gorgeous. The roads are really not big enough for two cars. <laughs> Wide, I've seen this time and again, people have to stop and squeeze by each other and they're always squeaking on the curbs. Seriously, I need to stop filming pubs, but I just can't stop. This looks like the Village Green and the church. And here is our very flinty church. St. Andrew's Church here in Alfriston was founded in the 1360s, and it's a fine example of a 14th century parish church. What I find most fascinating about it is that the old clergy house nearby was the first National Trust property. The most unusual thing about the church was that it was built all at one time and has had no major later additions like most of the Norman churches we see. Its size and soaring arches create a spacious and open feel, which is why some people have deemed it the Cathedral of the South Downs. I love this view of the church from the back of the churchyard, which is where the more recent gravestones are. The South Downs are a really pretty rural place that just feels like walking back in time. I almost walked right by this, but I have found the most magenta otter place in Alfriston. Well, Alfriston was amazing. I'm so glad we stopped there. Next place we're stopping in East Sussex is a village called Hurst Monsoon. I think. <laughs> Funny name, but it's supposed to have a great castle, so we're looking forward to discovering it. There's this observatory here near the castle, which is interesting. It's like a science center, a place where all the school kids go for a field trip. What's unusual about the castle is that it and the observatory are actually owned by a Canadian university. And that is why the castle is not open to the public. So we're just able to go into the grounds today. You can see a Canadian flag flying atop the castle. I'll let you in on a little secret. I love a castle with a moat, a moat that still has water in it. And I've not seen many of those. I think maybe Kerfilly Castle might be the only castle with like water around it, lakes and whatnot. But I'm excited to see some proper moated castles here in Sussex and Kent. And I think this might be my first one of the trip. We didn't realize the gardens had so many different gardens within it. It looks pretty expansive. Hearst Monceau has a rather interesting history. It was first built as a luxurious fortified home in the mid-15th century. 
Upon completion, it was one of the largest private dwellings in the country. But then, the internal structure of the castle was dismantled in 1776. The story goes it was dismantled on the advice of an architect who deemed it was too expensive to repair. Well, then, the abandoned castle started attracting local smugglers until it became a looted, ivy-clad ruin that eventually was the destination for Victorian day-trippers who wanted to wander around what remained of the castle. But by the 1930s, the castle was fully restored and was once again a sumptuous private home. During World War II, it was where the Hearts of Oak Insurance Company located themselves, all their records, and staff to escape the bombing in London. And after the war, the castle and its estate became the home of the Royal Greenwich Observatory for more than 40 years. But then, in 1993, the Hurstmonceau Castle estate was gifted to Queen's University in Canada, the UK campus of this Canadian university, as well as a popular visitor attraction. When I heard that the castle wasn't open to the public and that we could only go see the gardens, I assumed we wouldn't be able to go in this front door. But this is how you get to the gardens. To view the gardens, you have access right through the middle of the castle. Today is July 6th, and not all the flowers are in bloom, but it is a great time for lavender. So this lavender walk is really pretty. And we've got some nice pink hollyhocks, some beautiful blood red... I think those are dahlias. And of course, these flowers have to be included in the video because it's a Magenta Otter Travels video. This statue is honoring John Flamsteed, who was the first astronomer royal at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. At first I walked up to this and thought, I will have no idea how to read this contraption. It's some crazy kind of sundial. But look, it's got a line there in between the four and the five, about halfway, and it's actually about 4.30 right now. Okay, so I finally asked how to pronounce the name of the castle, and it's Hurstmanzu. So I apologize for, I think, saying it wrong throughout the entire video. <laughs> We're in a place called Battle, and look what's on the roundabout. Do you think that's the Battle of Hastings? Our last destination for the day is the medieval market town of Rye here in East Sussex. So we're going to explore this a bit and then have some dinner and then have a little rest after a very long day of sightseeing. One thing that you'll see here in the southeast, which is part of the architectural vernacular, is you'll see the top part of a house covered by tiles like this one. Sometimes they'll be just straight rectangular ones or they'll be scalloped like those ones that are, that are at the top of the street. This guy is being a complete pest and he will not leave this couple alone who are trying to just eat their dinner in peace. So if you want every tourist to video your shop, just name it the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Another clever name for a shop here in Rye. One interesting thing about Rye is that it used to be a port town, so it used to be right on the ocean, and since then the water has gone out significantly and you can't even see the ocean anymore, but the ocean would have been right here. And now the sea is way out there where those wind turbines are. We are having dinner at a place called The Fig here in Rye and it had great reviews online, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. This is a tapas style restaurant where you order two to three small plates per person. So we have ordered spicy prawn tacos with mango salsa, avocado smash, slaw, sour cream, and pickled pink onions. Roasted new potatoes with cashew cream, pesto, tender stem broccoli, marinated courgette ribbons and toasted seeds, the griddled goat's cheese with figs, prosciutto ham, honey, and toasted hazelnuts, and sweet corn and feta frittata with avocado, pico de gallo, chipotle, and sour cream. And we splurged and got a pudding as well. Chocolate and peanut tart with vanilla ice cream and peanut praline. Well, that meal was fabulous. The flavor combinations of all the ingredients were really good. I think my favorite thing might have been the griddled 
goat's cheese with the fig and prosciutto and honey and hazelnuts. The combination of that was really good. Honestly, the smell of that griddled cheese when it first came out, that was the best part. I normally do not eat Mexican food or anything close to Spanish or Latin food at all when I'm here, but I did break down and get that frittata, which was kind of Spanish, and then those tacos, and they were both excellent. They were really good. And then the vegetable dish was a little bit lighter, but again, just really tasty. And the dessert <laughs> was bigger than I expected, but that chocolate pie was fantastic. Having the chocolate pie and the little bit of vanilla ice cream after having those spicy shrimp tacos, perfect way to cool down my burning mouth. This is the land gate. It is the only remaining gate to the town and it was built in 1329. Great photo opportunities. You just have to make sure that no cars hit you when you're standing there getting a picture taken. So if you drink beer, this is the place to come when you visit Rye. This waterworks micro pub is supposed to be wonderful. Everybody raves about it that goes there has amazing reviews. We did not go there because in addition to not being drinkers, it's not a restaurant. It's not like a gastro pub with great food. All they serve are scotch eggs and pork pies, which is not what we wanted for dinner. This is the parish church, which is from the 12th century. And it's late at night, so I don't expect it will be open. I'm not sure why the bells are ringing so much at 7.25 p.m. Here are some flying buttresses. The church was not open, but it was nice just to come and have a quick look at it. This is Fletcher's house which is where John Fletcher was born, who allegedly was a collaborator with Shakespeare. Here's a good example of scalloped tiles. Lots more of the scalloped tiles. This house is beautifully done. And I just want to point out, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Ypres? Anyway, this is Ypres Lodge. And I think that this is Ypres Tower which is remaining from the Rye Castle and is now Rye Castle Museum, which of course is closed because it's late at night. This medieval castle was built in the 13th century to help defend the town of Rye. And it was later a private house and the town court and the jail. But now it is a museum. Street after street is full of really picturesque things here in Rye just see so many homes that I want to photograph and video. And then this street leads down to this really beautiful view of the countryside. And this is Lamb House, which is a National Trust property, but of course we're not visiting because we're here late at night long after it's closed. But this place is famous for the fact that Henry James, British author, lived here from 1898 to 1916. Now we're at the famous Mermaid Street and the church bells are still ringing in the background because they've been going crazy every five to 10 minutes for the last hour. And here's Mermaid Cottage on Mermaid Street, which like many of the places here is accommodation that's available as a holiday let. And this is the Mermaid Inn, which I guess was rebuilt in 1420. And this is the house opposite, which I fear is struggling with an inferiority complex. But it is really a beautiful house itself. And the cheeky names continue. This building here is from 1520, but now it's known as the house with two front doors. It's really pretty and peaceful at this hour of night until the church bells start going wild again. This is the old hospital here on Mermaid Street, and I think it's actually one of the prettiest half-timber frame buildings in town. Hello, hello. <laughs> You're just chilling, you're riding in style. <laughs> Your paws don't get sore like my feet feel right now. <laughs> here is the town hall. I told Ian I wasn't going to video anything else in Rye, but then I came to the Hatter's house. 
and in the window they have magenta stuff. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Those are magenta snowballs. And some amazing magenta fascinators and hats. Oh, I need one of these. I hope you enjoyed this action-packed road trip day of colleges and castles. Be sure to stay tuned because we have so many more amazing places coming soon, including a very historic cathedral and another stunning castle with a water-filled moat. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.